Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the AMRAP effect. Okay, so we're just discussing excitation contraction coupling, and in particular we're looking at um, the mechanisms of relaxation. And I promise you this will be extremely important for the AMRAP effect. Okay, so we've seen these two mechanisms, the PMCA and the NCX. Uh, now, just to give a bit more information, uh, the PMCA has an output of around 150 calcium ions per second. Okay, so it's capable, sorry, it's capable of extruding 150 calcium ions out of the cell membrane per second, whereas the NCX has a much higher capability. It can extrude 5,000 calcium ions per second, okay? So they, um, they both extrude calcium, but this one works much faster. Now, this one really only becomes active at very high, well, at high uh, cytosolic calcium levels. So this one is basally active, whereas NCX only becomes active at high calcium levels. So, for instance, the levels of calcium that are um, arising inside a, a muscle cell um, when it contracts. Okay, so both of these will, will be involved in extruding calcium uh, from the cytoplasm of the cell after um, contraction of the muscle cell. So, these are the baddies, however, because they are going to result in the calcium going back into the extracellular fluid. Okay, so then you're not going to be able to return it into the SR lumen. So, if these are too active, then the amount of calcium that's going to be in the SR lumen ready to be released on the next contraction of the uh, cardiomyocyte is going to be less, uh, so you're not going to get as powerful contraction. So the ANRAP effect is going to work by inhibiting the NCX, and since it's got this output of 5,000 calcium ions per second, compared to the PMCA, which it can only manage 150 per second, you can see that if we inhibit that, then a huge amount more calcium is going to remain in the cytoplasm, and then is going to be the target for the circa pump rather than NCX. So basically, if we inhibit NCX, then more of the calcium during the uh, calcium termination phase will be returned into the SR lumen rather than being extruded out of the cell. So when we come to the next contraction of the heart, when we come to release calcium again when an action potential arrives, then we'll be able to release more calcium, recruit more sarcomeres, and therefore get a greater force of contractility. So this is how the AMREP effect is going to happen. It's going to inhibit these NCX um, channels here. Okay, so how does it work? And we haven't actually got that much left anymore now. It's very simple. Basically, there is a sodium hydrogen exchanger in the cell membrane of cardiac myocytes. Okay, all right, so let's put this here. So this is a sodium hydrogen exchanger or sodium proton exchanger because it will be a hydrogen cation which is a proton okay exchanger and these are abbreviated to the NHE for short sodium is N H for proton E for exchanger okay so let's highlight this in turquoise okay and basically what these uh, proteins do is they move a sodium ion in to the cell, down its concentration gradient, and they move a proton out of the cell. So, basically, in cardiomyocytes, you have sodium proton exchanges which are activated by stretch. So, when the cardiomyocyte is continuously stretched for a long period of time, i.e. when the end diastolic volume is elevated for a long period of time, such as when we um, have um, raised aortic blood pressure. So when the AMREP effect comes into play, the way it's happening is it's activating these stretch-activated sodium proton exchangers. So these proteins start um, undertaking their function when the cardiomyocyte is stretched. 
what they're going to do is they're going to allow sodium to move in and protons to move out. Now that's going to have absolutely no effect on the electrical potential differences across the membrane because it's not an electrogenic movement. You're moving a positive charge in, you're moving a positive charge out. So it's not going to affect electrically, um, electrical potentials. However, it is going to affect the concentration gradient of sodium across the cell. So usually the concentration gradient of sodium across the cell is you have 145 millimolar sodium extracellularly and 12 millimolar sodium intracellularly. However, if you've got this thing continuously working, you're going to weaken this gradient basically, you're going to reduce this concentration and raise this concentration, reducing the sodium gradient. Now, if the sodium gradient goes down, will the activity of this NCX be as large? No, because what is this driven by? It's driven by the sodium wanting to move in. It's driven by the sodium gradient. If you deplete the sodium gradient across the cell membrane, you stop the NCX from working. Well, you don't completely stop it because the sodium gradient won't be completely depleted, but you'll reduce it somewhat. So you'll reduce these NCX activity. Therefore, you'll reduce the amount of calcium that's being extruded by the NCX, uh, upon the calcium termination. So this is happening every time you want to terminate the calcium signal when you want the, sp uh, the cardiac muscle cell to relax. But you'll reduce the amount that's extruded from the cell, so more of the calcium will go back into the lumen of the SR. So when you come to contract next, there will be a greater store of calcium in the SR to be released so uh, you'll release more calcium and you'll get a greater calcium spike and that will recruit more sarcomeres leading to a greater force of contraction of the cardiomyocyte. So through this action you have increased the force of contraction of the cardiomyocyte and that is the mechanism of the AMREP effect. So it comes into play when you have elevated end diastolic volume for long periods of time. So it uh, facilitates the Starling method mechanism uh, with increasing the force of contraction of the cardiomyocytes in response to end diastolic volume when those changes in end diastolic volume are, um, are not transient, i.e. they last for a good 15 minutes or so. Uh, whereas if you've just got a transient rise in end diastolic volume, for instance, if the left atrium just happens to pump in too much blood for some reason, then that will recruit the Starling mechanism, but it won't recruit the AMRAP effect. The AMRAP effect is recruited by a long-term elevated level of um, end diastolic volume.